previously on Truck Central. For the longest time, I just thought it was, that's just how it is. There's a combination to it, I found out, and only one other person I know of has also discovered this. Welcome back to Truck Central. I'm Mr. Justin Wheeler, and this is the 2019 Ram 1500 Limited High Mileage Edition. To quickly recap what's in the playlist currently, videos one and two are the 50,000 mile review, where I do a pretty in-depth analysis of the things that I do like, the things I don't like, and I'm just brutally honest about, you know, what's good about the truck and what's not. We had some issues from the factory that had to be resolved at the dealer, um, and that was a little bit of a, of a pain, and, and a lot of you guys had similar issues uh, and not just the Ram 1500 and similar um, Jeep and Mopar related vehicles. Video three in this playlist was a pretty much a Q&A session where I looked at the comments and questions that were asked in videos one and two and I just gave all the answers that I could to the most common common questions. You know, a lot of people asked about the tailgate, the AC, the gear ratio, all that. So if you have questions about that, go, go ahead and jump to video three. Video four was my 70K update. There are some new things that kind of popped up that, that we discussed. So if uh, you want to kind of see how the wear and tear develops from, from zero to 70K, that's a good video to check out. In part five, I talk about why I don't like the stock tires, why I like the new tires, and what the biggest size is that you can fit on the stock configuration uh, especially with air ride you know you've got a lot to consider when you when you have the adjustable suspension so i talk about that i do all the clearances and i show you guys you know where you need to make modifications to your inner fender if you want to go bigger and then of course part six was the precursor to this video where we talk about some of the cool hidden features that this truck has to offer going forward we have a few things in queue um, i've got a miles per gallon analysis that i'm doing a lot, of, a lot of fuel efficiency talk in the comments. I felt like my fuel efficiency was pretty poor, but I've been exploring the aero mode that you get with the air ride, and you may be surprised to see um, how much you can save real dollars by using the aero mode. Uh, other videos coming up, we've got a towing video coming up. We've got a uh, inexpensive add-on video coming up. Some of the you know, aftermarket stuff you can add to this truck that doesn't cost a lot. Um, we've got a 100K video right around the corner as we start to creep up in mileage. And, you know, there, there may be a, a, a gooseneck install video if, uh, if you guys think that would be interesting. I know some of you are probably thinking that's blasphemy, putting a gooseneck hitch in a half-ton truck. But, man, this isn't your grandpa's half-ton. This, is this is a work truck. So if you want to see that, let me know. So without talking too much let's go ahead and jump into the last few things I wanted to show you guys that you could expect to get out of this truck. All right, everybody knows from the previous videos, I'm a fan of the sunroof. Never thought I would need or want a sunroof, but really enjoy this one. So this is one thing you may or may not know. Not a big deal, but when I first got this truck and I opened the sunroof, I thought, well, that's cool. It opens, you know, it opens a good amount, but it's uh, it's not open all the way. You actually have to click the button one more time to get the full reveal. Now, I don't know why Ram did that. I don't know what the purpose is of the partial open because it's not like it's just, you know, a little bit open or even half open. It goes like 90% and then stops. So if you have one of these trucks, and you want maximum airflow, remember to hit that open button one more time. So let's talk about the MDS system, the multi-displacement system. So most people know, some people don't, the Ram, the Hemi version of the Ram 1500s come equipped with the MDS. It's a fuel efficiency thing where the, the motor goes to partial cylinders in order to conserve fuel. It's, uh, it's not something that just ram does lots of lots of makes and manufacturers offer it um and you you'll notice because you'll get that little green eco light when it's enabled right well some people have realized that you can go into the settings go to display that's weird and it says fuel saver display and cluster right 
and it's on. And so you can turn that off. But what's important to note is turning that off does not disable your MDS. That just keeps the light from coming on on the dash. Okay, so just because you don't see the eco light doesn't mean the MDS is not active and not working. So however you want to do this, you know, you can leave it on or off. I'll turn it off just for now. In order to actually disable the MDS, I'm going to put it in drive even though I'm not going anywhere. You have to use your gear selector um, buttons on the steering wheel. And when you're driving, you actually have to put it to where it shows, sorry about that, where it shows negative eight. And you have to leave it in this, you have to leave it in this configuration um, in order to actually disable the MDS. What this does is it basically just tells the truck that you want to limit the truck to the highest gear. And by putting it in that mode, uh, the, the MDS will not actually uh, activate. Now, the only problem with that is, is you have to do this every time you start the truck. So uh, most people don't really care. Most people prefer the MDS because of the savings and fuel. Um, however, some people don't, you know, they question the, uh, the impact it has on the motor itself. So, you know, teach his own, choose your poison. Um, if you like it, use it. If you don't, that's how you disable it. Uh, on the screen here, you can see the weather map. The weather map is great. Not everybody knows this is a thing. It isn't really advertised for what it's actually capable of. Not only can you see the map, can you see the weather, can you see the temperature, it has the whole radar effect. Now, I have no precipitation in the forecast today, but if we did, you'd actually see the fronts moving in. You would see the directions, you would see the times. What's really cool about it is you get the uh, the alerts on the screen. So, you know, just like your phone sends alerts when there's severe weather in the area, the truck does it too. And it's really handy because it usually alerts me before my phone does, which is perfect. I drive a lot. It will let me know before I'm going to, you know, enter into a spot with severe weather, which is really handy. Uh, one of the other neat things while we're on this screen, say weather is an important thing for you. Doesn't apply to everybody, but if it does, and you want to pin it to your shortcuts here, which I think that's what they call these buttons at the bottom. I call them shortcuts. It's the buttons that are always there regardless of whatever screen you're on. So say that the weather map is something that you want to be able to just jump to immediately. So all you have to do is go to the travel link function you want to pin long press drag it and there it is so now anytime that you want to see the weather it's just a quick click and you're there and you can do that with all of these you can make them whatever you want it to be honestly i don't change these much because i like the way they're set up in fact i'm going to put this back to where i had it it's the backup camera over here i like that actually you know what i'm gonna do surround camera i use that more there we go so that's pretty cool something you may not be aware of while I've got your attention in this area here, let me talk about the dash cam. Dash cams are everywhere. They've got fully purpose-built dash cams all over the market. This is an old iPhone that I have um, mounted to the dash. But what's, what's cool about this is Ram has the 12 volt power plug hidden right up here. Not really hidden, but if you're short, honestly, you might not see it right up here and that's that's really handy because it's the cable management is so much better now that there's a power take point there in the last generation of my fourth gen rams i had a dash cam mounted to the windshield but there wasn't a plug up top it was down low and i didn't want a cord hanging down so i had to route it through the headliner through the pillar under the dash into the console and it's really it's just it's just inconvenient so not a big deal not a not a you know a home run but I'm super happy that they implemented that. The rear camera, this is something and I'm kind of embarrassed to admit that I didn't notice at first, is that you can zoom in. I don't know why I didn't notice that. It's fairly obvious, but sometimes some of these features are hidden right in front of your face, like I said. So that's great backing up to a trailer or if you're uh, in a parking spot and you're trying to get as far back as you can without hitting the car behind you, you've got that somebody's tailgating you and you want to see their license plate now in oklahoma you don't have to have a license plate on the front but in 
in a lot of states like Texas, California, New York, I think. Um, hell, probably most states. License plates on the front. And uh, so that's something you could do. What else? Now, the paper clip. Ram molded paper clips into the front and back of both sun visors. I, I think that's kind of silly. I don't use it. I put this in here for demonstration purposes only. It honestly doesn't work very well because it's tight. The, the latch mechanism here is recessed from the material. So you really have to distort what you're wanting to clip to put it up there. And you couldn't fit more than a couple things in there. I mean, this business card is is about maxing this thing out. So I think it's a little cheesy that they did that. It, it's a neat idea, but honestly, it's it's an antiquated methodology. Gone are the days where your sun visors are storage systems. Yes, 50 years ago, yeah, you put your insurance, you put your verification and registration, you put your keys, your sunglasses, everything went up here because there was no other storage. Headliners didn't have sunglass holders. Dashboards didn't have dual glove compartments, so you had to use your sun visor as storage space. Makes sense. We don't need that anymore. No one is going to dangle paper from their sun visor, in my opinion. So I, I didn't want to I didn't want to omit that uh, because some people might be interested in it. I don't think it's very helpful, but if you like that kind of thing, there it is. All right, so the last couple things I have to share with you today are night lighting features. So in a previous video, I think part one or part two of this series, I talked about the self-adjusting headlights. And so I'll demonstrate that again here. Essentially, they will turn in and out to the left and to the right based upon the direction you're steering. You can see that there see that here let me get, get around this vehicle and you see a little bit better so and that is something that I think is only available on the limited trim it might be available on Longhorn trim uh, but it is not a default factory setting for just the Laramie trim package Laramie's get the full LED front lighting package um, but they don't have what this is and this is called the by LED lighting package. See how they turn there? Here's a little bit better depiction of what that looks like. And you can identify which vehicles are equipped with this by just looking at the headlights. Dynamic by LED inward or inboard and outboard rotation. Sorry, my lights are filthy. Can't get that to focus. A couple other quick things real quick and I'm going to use the glass uh, storefront of this convenience store to uh, kind of help illustrate my purpose or illustrate my point rather. Uh, you know, the Automatic high beams are are pretty common. Lots of cars have it. This is one of them. Really nice uh, feature to have. One of the things that I it took me a while to figure out was how to override the automatic high beam. Essentially, what I would like to be able to do is turn the high beams on when it was an auto because the the lights do it themselves. So all you have to do is have the high beams enabled like that, and you do that by pushing forward on the this little column selector here and then you take it from auto you roll the knob from auto to manual and you get high auto high beams disabled and back in auto and it goes off so that's a nice feature to have and then finally there is one additional headlight enhancement that Ram has introduced in this truck and it is kind of low speed um, side lighting and I wasn't sure 
how Ram was accomplishing this. In fact, I got out and looked for hidden lights and I couldn't find them. So check this out. You turn the wheel just a little bit and you can't tell because of the reflection and the fog light comes on. Turn the right to, wheel to the right. So you can't see my hand here. To the left, left fog light comes on to the right. Right fog light comes on. So that's awesome too. Um, so they've done a lot to integrate steering and lighting um, and that couples well with the front camera and the front sensors and it's just it all in all a good total package. Now one thing to remember that will not work if you have your fog lights on. So if your fog lights are on all the time like it is now I can turn the wheel and nothing happens. The fog lights have to be off for the steering to turn those on. All right, that just about covers it, I think. Uh, if you have any questions or any other uh, ideas or, or topics that I didn't go over, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.